Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I welcome you all in this lecture of nuclear receptors. So the receptors, what we are uh, meant by the nuclear receptors, these are the receptors which are present inside the nucleus, and uh, sometimes it, uh, there are two core requirements for their interaction with the neighboring counterparts of the ligands. Now. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I welcome you all in the nuclear receptor lecture. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the role of nuclear receptors and their ligand types. Now, the two core features of the ligands are the low molecular weight components. These are the low molecular weight uh, things which are relatively hydrophobic molecules. So, since they are hydrophobic in nature, so their entry from the cellular membrane part is relatively easy based on their size and hydrophobicity. So, once they are inside the cytoplasm, inside the cytoplasm, they may enter straightway inside the nucleus or their interaction is dependent on certain kind of receptors which are called nuclear receptors. So, once they enter inside the nucleus, they are responsible for the activation of certain kind of genes that can enhance proliferation. The kinds of receptors so far been identified in our pre-vital role for cell proliferation are 48. Examples of the lichens include sex hormones, retinoids and vitamin D and these sex hormones, the receptors which are dealing with these sex hormones are progesterone receptor, estrogen receptor and androgen receptors. Now these androgen, progesterone and estrogen receptors are of very prime importance in cancer research. So we are going to learn about these nuclear receptors, how they are made up of. A nuclear receptor is composed of three components. The one is the DNA binding domain, then there is a hinge region and the conserved ligand binding domain. So it's a pretty straightforward, uh, what you can say, diagrammatic presentation that you are looking right now. This is an example of PPAR, which is composed of a DNA binding domain. Then there is a loop structure and after that loop structure, this is a conserved ligand binding domain. So sometimes it is also plausible that the nuclear receptors remain attached to the chromosomes. So some receptors are always present inside the cytoplasm till activated by the ligands when some receptors may always bind to the chromosome and depending upon the ligand interaction their conformational change bring up the activation of certain set of genes. So the interaction with the DNA of the nuclear receptor is mediated by a sequence recognition and this sequence is generally called as A, G, G, T, A, C. So this sequence recognition is being mediated by the DNA binding domain proteins of a nuclear receptor. So upon ligand mediated activation of receptor they bind at our near promoter regions to a hexanucleotide sequence which is A, G, G, T, A, C and are called hormone response elements. And based on the same property that what you are looking right now is basically E2 or estrogen structure. Once the estrogen uh, receptor recognizes the estrogen molecule, it binds with the DNA and upon binding it activates glucocorticoid receptor interacting protein 1 which leads to the activation of cell proliferation. So the activators of activators interaction is mediated by glucocorticoid receptor interacting protein 1 is actually influenced by the presence of E2, estradiol, diethyl stilbestrol, what you can see and this green color protein generation is being facilitated by this interaction of E with ER and E with ER interaction leads to GRP1 secretion. Now exploiting the same channel a drug has been designed which is called as tamoxifen. What tamoxifen do? It also interacts with ER receptor, so it basically competes with estrogen. So tamoxifen completes, competes with estrogen and binds the ER receptor. And upon binding with the ER receptor, it induces a conformational change. And instead of rooting this ER receptor towards the activators, it root 
it channelizes the R receptor to bind those DNA sites which are meant for repression. So it represses cell proliferation. Okay. So basically all that cellular machinery is being governed by a structural conformational change of tamoxifen. So tamoxifen has two work. First, it didn't bind to the estrogen with the estrogen receptor. Second, it didn't bind binding with the estrogen receptor. Instead of rooting it to glucocorticoid receptor interacting protein, root kiya ki ab aap DNA repressor isko activate kare, jo cell proliferation ko halt kar le. Okay? This is how a, uh, planning for C selective estrogen receptor modulators puri a class defined ki gai cancer research ke andar ki hum tamoxifen like molecules bhi bana sakte hain aur unse hum uh, ye kaam le sakte hain ki wo cell proliferation ko inhibit kare. In the next part, what we learned was that apart from cell ligand interaction outside with the other cells, there are the cells which are residing on the like the saw top of uh, basement membrane. As a basement membrane, hoti hai, the basement membrane is basically composed of glycoproteins, collagens, laminins, or different structural uh, components of proto-glycokines. So, what molecules are जो इन सेल्स की इंटरेक्शन कराते हैं बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन के साथ सो व्हाट आर दोस मॉलिक्यूल्स उनमें जो बेसिक टू मॉलिक्यूल्स व्हिच आर ऑफ वेरी प्राइम इंपॉर्टेंस आर फर्स्ट इंटीग्रेंस व्हाट आई एम राइट नाउ ट्राइंग टू ड्रा आर द रेड कलर इंटीग्रेंस नाउ दीस इंटीग्रेंस आर रिस्पांसिबल फॉर द अटैचमेंट ऑफ द सेल विद द बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन एंड दिस फिनोमेना इज लार्जली बीन एक्सप्लॉयटेड इन प्लास्टिक वेयर्स वेयर द सेल्स वी आर सपोज्ड टू रिसाइड ऑन द top of uh, what you can say the plastic so hota ye hai ki the cells hain the, they secrete certain sort of collagen fibers aur jo collagen fiber wo secrete karte hain yahan pe ye collagens jo yahan pe secrete hoti hain inke sath cells apni integrins jo ke glycoproteins hain wo secrete karte hain aur wo glycoproteins responsible hoti hain interaction ke liye now there are two proteins which are lost limb and use. Now one is discoidin domain receptors, RTKs, or integrins. Integrins are the family of 18 alpha and 8 beta chain components or ye combinations may aate hai, jase alpha or ye components responsible hai interaction ke liye or cell ki attachment ke liye with the basement membrane. This is the structure of alpha component. This is the beta subunit. Alpha unit contains cations. These cations are made up of either magnesium, manganese, calcium. These are the cations which are interacting with the beta components. And these are the units which bind with the beta subunit. And they communicate the cytoskeletal rearrangement inside the cell. Now the interactions of alpha uh, components, alpha subunits with beta components are responsible for collagen receptors or attachment with RGD receptors. Now RGD receptors are basically arginine, glycine and glutamic acid receptors. Now alpha subunit or beta subunit ke complex to formation hai wo yani jaise hum ye kahen ke alpha 5 beta 1 steric ka matlab hai ke iska koi ek cleavable portion hoga. So alpha 5 beta 1 is responsible for the binding affinity of RGD receptor domain and this interaction will mediate. With the laminate receptors, we have to interact with these three protein components. Leukocyte specific receptors are these. So, integrins offer a bi-directional signaling route. Now, this is important to learn. Let me draw a cell over here. And this is, let's suppose, this is a basement membrane part. So, one type of signaling is that the cells reside, that the cells reside itself on this bed of extracellular matrix all right but then these these matrix upon this affinity of the cell the cell also tries to converge itself so let me draw uh, this convergence with another color let me use the red color over here now this convergence of the cell results in an appendage formation now this appendage formation is basically the strengthening of additional integrins associated at this point. Now, a culmination of these additional integrins is generally called as focal adhesion kinase. So, the focal adhesion kinase is basically a complex formation of multiple integrins at one single point. 
So a cell protruding at one particular point is focal adhesion kinase. This is the